Hey everyone, welcome back uh, to Tacos Tuesday with me, Vince Montero. Uh, I was out last week for the Thanksgiving holiday. I hope everyone um, had a great time with appropriate social distancing with your friends or family. And if you did not celebrate Thanksgiving, then if you're coming viewing from a different country, then apologies that we were not here last week. Uh, probably should have announced the week before that I wouldn't be here, but. To that note, um, we uh, I'm doing these for three more weeks, so until December 15th. So Tuesday, December 15th will be the last one for the year, and then we will start up again in January. So you're getting notice ahead of time now for that. Um, for those of you that are brand new to our Tacos Tuesday, it uh, the reason we call it that is not just because we love tacos, which I do, absolutely. I mean, I am Latin and I make a mean taco, but uh, we call it Tacos Tuesday to emphasize our tacos metric, which is our total sales uh, and total ACOS metrics that we actually do display in our PPC management tool ads, which I am the product manager of. So what we try to do with this is encourage users to not just look at their ACOS, which definitely is an important metric to gauge your PPC performance, uh, but to also look at your total sales when uh, gauging the effectiveness, because we do know that PPC does um, over time, especially affect your organic sales. So we like to encourage users to tie those together when and wherever you can. And we do make that very easy to do in our ads tool, which I have showcased uh, um, every week for the past possibly six weeks, I believe that I've been doing this now. Um, but today and for the next two Tuesdays, we're gonna be focusing uh, strictly on uh, holiday uh, tips and tricks and tactics that you should be employing uh, to get re ready for this really busy holiday season. Um, if you guys had a, a big push over the weekend, the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, then you just got a taste of what's gonna potentially be the next couple of weeks. So um, instead of going into ads and doing a demo and discussing a feature, I'm gonna be sharing uh, some a few slides for the next couple of weeks. Uh, and then hopefully, that some of these nuggets will help you get ready for this busy, busy holiday season that we're expecting, um, which is upon us right now. So um, I have some slides that I will be sharing with you guys. And what uh, I encourage you to do is just, uh, as soon as we're done with the slides, I think I'm only gonna go through two different tips today. Um, go ahead and then ask me your questions uh, and please, yes, let us know where, 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 you're, where you're signing in from or logging in from. Looks like Zubair's in the UK. So good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Jersey Shore Devil. So I'm obviously someone on the <laughs> East Coast. Uh, I'm currently in the West Coast in our Irvine offices. Um, I will probably be here in the Irvine offices again next week. But actually, my goal is to start doing these from home. So very soon, you guys might see me in a different background in the next couple of weeks, maybe in the new year. So going to go ahead and get started on the slides that I uh, actually created with during a webinar that we, we did or that I did with Amazon advertising. So uh, about a month ago, we created, uh, we did a webinar with them that focused on around uh, holidays uh, readiness. And so that's where these slides are from. And I wanted to make sure that we shared with them with as many people as possible. It looks like a lot more people are saying hello, Oregon's in the house. Um, and good morning from Spain, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys for, for logging in. I think today we're on YouTube, Facebook, as well as LinkedIn. So uh, if uh, you guys find these helpful, please share with your own circles, your own social media. Um, I do have a StreamYard a link of my own that I finally got, so I'll be able to actually share that. And you guys can actually share with other users that you think might find this helpful very soon. I'll try to get that uh, by the time we meet next week so I can share that with all of you. All right, so let's jump into it. We're going to talk about, uh, again, holiday kind of focused uh, tips and tricks. Um, so we're gonna start with how to optimize your advertising. Um, I do apologize, the subheading under here says, take time to experiment now so that you have the data you need by December. It's December 1st. So these are still things that you potentially could take advantage of now if you wanna do some of these uh, tests that we're gonna go over right now. So let's see, let me go to the next. So what do I mean by optimizing your ad copy? Uh, simply 
when you optimize your ad copy and include, and include holiday type words or keywords or maybe seasonal type keywords, um, it may encourage shoppers that are looking for those types of things that are searching for winter versions of this or you know holiday versions of something that they actually might uh, find your product uh, instead of another another uh, competitor's product. So. Uh, typically, what you do is if you have access to brand analytics, you can go and see last year's results. Uh, you can go into December of 2019 and you can see what kind of phrases, uh, what kind of uh, search terms that uh, users were doing in the month of uh, December of 2019. Um, it's, it's definitely different <laughs> this December uh, because of the, the COVID situation. So the searches are actually quite different in looking at that if you have brand analytics. And that is if you're brand registered, you do get access to that. Um, so if you do have brand analytics, I do encourage you to take a look at last year. Whatever your product is, put that word in and see what type of holiday words might come up for you. So um, if you're selling candles, which is an example on this page, uh, if you put candles into your sponsor brand uh, or, or sorry, your brand analytics, you might find that there's Christmas candles came up as a search or uh, winter candles or holiday candles. So that is something you might want to then use to update your ad copy. Uh, if you don't have access to brand analytics, um, which you will not, again, if you're not brand registered, um, you can still test if your product might get left during the holidays. And one way is just to test this out with different uh, keywords that are unique to the holiday season. So again, for example, if you're selling candles, uh, you might want to change the, the title of your sponsor brand or sponsor display or the listing to include winter candles during the, the, the cold season. Um, again, sponsor brand and sponsor display are something you only get if you're brand registered. But if you do have access to those and units, maybe update the, the, the headings and see if you might get a lift over the next uh, few days or week on those campaigns. Um, as long as you track the performance of these changes long enough to see if there's an upward trend in impressions and conversions, uh, I would suggest at least uh, two weeks. Depending on when you start the testing, uh, it should give you enough data to see if you're going to get lift um, on those holiday kind of words. Uh, you know, as we get closer and closer to the Christmas uh, to Christmas Day. So the other thing that you can do is uh, test seasonal campaigns. So you can also add these words that you're, you're thinking about maybe using as um, uh, you know holiday kind of winter or Christmas type related keywords. If you want to run PPC to them, you can do those in, in seasonal campaigns. So uh, what I'm saying here is simply um, find those versions of, of holiday keywords that have your product name in it, but then also with uh, maybe Christmas or holiday or winter uh, and use those in a PPC campaign. So uh, what I would suggest though, is, though is instead of adding those keywords into your regular campaigns, you would you'd want to create different campaigns or separate campaigns. Um, and once you create those additional campaigns that are solely holiday related, uh, combined again with your product keywords, uh, these include phrases like Christmas gift, holiday gift, uh, best gift, uh, presents. Again, if you're uh, setting up a seasonal campaign, ensures you don't interfere with your evergreen campaign, so your campaigns that are always kind of running. So for example, if you're selling swimsuits, you'll want to create a separate campaign and a bit more aggressively on the ones if you have a version of your swimsuit that is specific to cold weather. Now, body suits for cold weather is a product, obviously, that's going to be more competitive in the winter months compared to someone searching for a regular swimsuit during the holidays. But if you do create that seasonal campaign, you can put cold weather swimsuit, you can put uh, winter swimsuit, um, you could even test holiday swimsuit, I, I, I would imagine, or Christmas swimsuit uh, in there. And you can test that in your own campaign. But the one thing you do want to make sure, and it's a little pro tip that we uh, added in here, uh, for any kind of seasonal campaigns that you do launch, make sure you include the end dates, uh, because you don't want these campaigns obviously running past Christmas, because again, if you're looking at holiday specific types keywords, then they're not going to work uh, after December, you know, probably 23rd. So you definitely, if you're going to test this out by using or by testing seasonal campaigns, uh, you don't, you want to include end dates into your campaigns. That way you don't have to worry about it. Amazon's going to shut them off automatically for you. Um, it's not going to spend after that date. It, it, it's also something that if you're, if you are, um, if you do have brand registry, 
If you are building, uh, maybe you want to build holiday versions of a sponsored brand or sponsored display, um, Amazon actually makes makes you include an end date. Uh, they actually look at the copy. Um, again, sponsored brand, sponsored display have like headlines, they have titles, and they have um, they have words that you can put into. So as I suggested earlier um, at the beginning of this, if you do put any kinds of holiday related terms into your title or headline for sponsor brand or sponsor display, um, it actually won't get approved by Amazon unless you put that end date in there. So if whether or not you're doing it for sponsored product campaigns, seasonal campaigns, if you're what, it, or if you're doing a sponsor brand or sponsor display, um, it's just a good idea in general to go ahead and use those end dates. So those are my tips for today. And I'm going to save uh, uh, the remaining for the next two Tuesdays. So we can go ahead and get into the questions now. So we can close off this. Uh, all right. <laughs> Raquel says, love the webinar. I have to go back to work. I'll come back and check out the video. Ah, thank you. That's really nice to hear, Raquel. I appreciate that you, you get a lot from, from um, these sessions. So Robert says, I uh, wonder if any candle keyword is worth it. Uh, it must be over $1.50 per click. Um, not like you're selling candles for $30. This is what I'm learning as a new seller. Yeah, exactly. You you do need to test or at least input the, the keyword into, let's say you can uh, pretend like you're creating a campaign. Um, Amazon will show you right away what the suggested bid is. Um, I doubt the I, I doubt the word. Um, well, actually, the word candle specifically might be uh, very very. Uh, it, obviously, it has a lot of traffic, but you definitely want to be a little bit more niche. So, you, my recommendation here that I just went through, Robert, was winter candle or holiday candle or Christmas candle. That's a little bit more uh, focused and probably um, less impressions and impressions that are only specific to the holiday months. Um, that is what it, uh, the tool brand, brand analytics would actually show you. If you did use that, it would show you the types of um, words associated with candle that users are searching for um, in around this time last year or even last month. Um, for example, if you use the word candle and brand analytics for last month or, or, or the month of October, uh, you might have seen um, uh, Halloween candles, right? And then the next month of, of November would have been Thanksgiving candles. So um, I, I wouldn't use just the word candle. It probably has a, a lot of search volume, but probably not worth it. You'd want to focus more if you can, if you are selling candles, um, if you can uh, test the word winter or seasonal or holiday or Christmas, that that's what you should potentially do. All right. How to reduce a cost during the holidays. Um, the only thing that I would say during the holiday season, and, and we'll get into more tips about uh, this in the next ones too, is setting budget aside and, and uh, setting your expectations up. Uh, there's a lot of traffic. There's also a lot of competition. Um, and a lot of that competition is going to be increasing their bids during the holidays because they want to capture all that new, that new, uh, the new shoppers that uh, we now have in Amazon that we didn't have last year or early this year even. So the one thing that you uh, should focus on, it, again, as I talked about at the beginning of this episode, is what your, what's your tacos? What's your total sales? What's your total ACoS? Um, if, as long as you see an upward trend um, or, or an upward trend as far as sales uh, and a steady tacos, um, then you're actually doing okay. Again, your PPC is your marketing budget for being for doing business on Amazon. It's going to affect your organic sales because the more someone sees your product uh, advertisement, the more they're going to remember it, the more they might come back and find your product organically or put in your name uh, specific, your specific product name, and then find you organically and then make a purchase. So you want to look at uh, not just your ACoS during the holidays, but what's your tacos. And a tacos during the holiday season, I would say you're going to be really lucky if you can get it below 20%. Uh, a usual uh, a tacos metric that you want to shoot for is, is around uh, 10 to 15. Um, but as a general rule, if you want to be competitive uh, during this month, uh, you should expect a higher ACoS just in general, especially if your product is newer. If it's not yet fully um, you know, uh, gained traction yet in the uh, Amazon algorithm yet, you're going to have to spend a little bit more in order to get that placement that you want. 
Um, that will eventually lead to more sales, more reviews, and then an increase in your ranking. So the other main thing that you want to do to increase your or how to reduce your ACoS uh, is your search terms. Uh, that's your bread and butter. Uh, each week uh, when I went over ads, we probably talked about or hinted something about your search terms. If you've got broad, uh, broad keywords, uh, if you've got an auto campaign, make sure you're looking at that search term report and then trimming down anything that uh, you see is wasting. Um, and maybe it's just wasting right now. Uh, maybe there's some search terms, depending on how old your campaigns are. Maybe there's some search terms that worked a couple months ago, but they're not working right now. Maybe just make those negative right now. Right? If you're using an auto campaign, for example, uh, maybe just make those negative right now. And then January, put them uh, archive the negatives so that it comes back. Um, if you're using exact keywords, then maybe pause those keywords right now and pick them back up again or, or turn them back on again after the holidays. But again, that's all about looking at the data. Uh, you need to make those determinations by you know, looking at your past couple of months to see what the usual performance is compared to now before making those decisions. If you do have ads, uh, which is our PPC management tool, um, all of that is very easy to do uh, pretty much on our analytics page. So hope that helps, Safi. Hello from Israel. Wow, that's that's amazing. <laughs> and from Canada. Good to, good to, good to uh, see uh, this multi multinational uh, a group of, of sellers that we have here. All right, Herbert asks, how long does it take for you to index for a keyword once you put it in your listing? And where is the next most effective place for the keyword after the title and bullet points? This is more a question for Karen Thomas, who is our product listing expert. I believe she does kind of some sessions as well. But uh, fortunately, I have listened to some of her advice uh, quite a bit. And I did do some product listing optimizations when I was a consultant, uh, because if your product listing isn't good and your ads aren't, your, your PPC is not going to work. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind right now, you guys, if you have the time, make sure your product listings are fully optimized as much as possible. Uh, or else you potentially are just wasting money on your PPC. Now to, to Herbert's uh, question, how long does it take for you to index for a keyword once you put it in your listing? Um, it really depends on where it is in the listing. The title is the first and main thing that Amazon looks at in order to do indexing. Um, and then they look at the search terms in the back, your, in your backend keyword page. That's the second place that they look at it. Uh, the third most important place is in your bullets. So as long as you're looking at, you're doing your keyword research, you're using Cerebro, Magnet, you know the keywords that you should um, be indexed for or you want to be indexed for, make sure that those keywords are in your title first and foremost, and then in your bullets, uh, sorry, in your search terms, in your backend keyword page, and then in your, uh, 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 then in your bullets, title, search terms, back on keyword page, and then your bullets. That's the order of importance. Um, and that is uh, actually from Karen Thomas, and who, who actually teaches that. So um, as far as how long it takes for the keyword to index, that I, that I do not know. Um, I do know, however, that if you are using those same keywords, again, that you're putting into your title and putting into your search terms in your back and keyword page in your bullets, um, if you use those same keywords for a PPC, uh, and you start selling on those keywords, then Amazon will see that and you'll rank quicker for uh, you'll and you'll index for those keywords. Uh, Amazon's all about the sales, right? So as soon as you start selling on particular keywords, um, you, that's definitely going to help you index as well. Miguel says, when you talk about adding words like presents or gifts, where would I add them? The bullet points, the back end, a keyword or, or a campaign. So the suggestion that um, I, I went through was to add them into the title of your campaigns. So again, only if you have sponsored brands or sponsored display, you have the ability to use headline, um, they're called basically they're called headline titles that you can put, uh, you can add keywords into. That was the first suggestion. If you don't have sponsored brands or sponsored display uh, campaigns, which you really should, that's actually a really big push this, uh, this month and next is, those ad units that you get for be, being brand registered, which are sponsored brands and sponsored display are going to be really, really powerful this season. Um, if you don't have those, then yeah, you would use those into the title of your, of your listing, uh, potentially in the bullets and also potentially in the, the search terms 
uh, pretty much in the order that I just answered for uh, for Herbert. Um, so that will um, that will potentially help you. There's no guarantees with that though, because if your product really isn't holiday related or focused, um, you might not get indexed for that. Uh, you have a little bit more control over the, the the copy, the ad copy, which is this in the sponsor brands or sponsor display, which is why I mentioned um, that for that particular tip, Miguel. Can you please show me how to use analytics in Helium 10 to see a word that uh, were searched for last year? Um, I could actually. Uh, <laughs> um, and what I had mentioned was brand analytics. So brand analytics is uh, if only again, if you're brand registered. So Zishan, I would ask as a follow up, are you brand registered? If you are, uh, then yes, we I, I can show you that. If you're not brand registered, then what the next question would be is do you have ads? Um, you do if you have access to ads, and depending on how long you've been with us, we, because ad stores data up for up to two years, um, we also have an analytics section in our ads tool and we can uh, see um, keywords that were obviously in use during the insert terms that were used during that time because we save all of that data. But we don't have, um, you would have to know the keyword that you're looking for specifically in order to see it from last year. But from brand analytics, um, we, we can we can do uh, you can use anything and it'll show you. But yeah, let me go ahead and set that up so I can show you real quick. Again, this is only if you are brand registered. Give me one second to figure out which account I want to use. Uh, all right, I want to do this one. Uh, uh, no, I'll use my account. And Let's see. Okay, let me switch this merchant. Okay, so let me change my. Let's see. Okay, let me change this screen to share it with this one instead. Uh, sorry, guys, the screen's behind, so that's why I'm looking at this like that. <laughs> So let's see, let's stop this screen share and then we'll do a new one, uh, share screen. Um, and it is this one, share, but it's over here. All right, so now you guys should see, um, well, see now I can't see your comments and things, but I'll just go through this really, really quickly. Again, if you are brand registered, which this particular account is under brands, you, this is the first thing that pops up is brand analytics. This is a very, very powerful tool, only available again to brand registered users, um, but it basically tells you every single search term that a user is, is that, that are the most popular that are, be, that are being used. <laughs> so right now you can see that the PS5 is, prob is the highest uh, searched, uh, number one search term for um, the, the 1115 to 1121. Uh, so that's probably for gifts, and then obviously because we're in <laughs> we're in COVID times, toilet paper is number two. But you can actually change. Uh, you would change this to monthly, and then once you do that, uh, you are able to go back to the previous year. So I'm just going to look at December 2019, right? I'm going to apply that, and what we're looking at right now is for the month of December of last year. These are the top search terms that people were using. So uh, lots of electronics, AirPods, iPhone case, laptop. So if you sold any of these types of products la last year, um, you, you probably did very, very well. As you can see, Christmas decorations is, is down way down here, um, but you can get an idea of what people were actually searching for last Christmas or last year, December. Now, if we look for the word candles, what we should see is uh, that word in it and then you would also then be able to see if there are any kind of holiday related ones that we're look, looking for. So obviously Yankee candles are pretty really a pretty popular one. So that that's up there. Um, but we do see Christmas candle. It's right here, right? So you do see that there was people looking for Christmas candles during that month. Um, and it gives you the information there. So, uh, you know, depending on what your product is, you would put that in here and you would see if there were any searches 
that had any kind of holiday keywords in it related to your product. And then that's what you would use to, um, to guide you in, in what maybe the update that, uh, that you want to do. Right. So that is that. And how do I get back to my, <laughs> sorry guys, this is different than my setup at home. So, uh, actually, you know what, can, can, Cassandra, can you just stop sharing the screen? I don't know if that'll help. Let's see, it probably has, but let's do it this way. Uh, I hate using full screen. Sorry guys. <laughs> it's so sensitive to, uh, it, it's giving me Chrome, but uh, I guess I could quit it. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys, but I got rid of that screen. So hopefully uh, you guys are still here. You are, perfect. So um, I'll give it a second just to make sure people, um, if, may, if maybe they got logged out that they can log back in. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you guys understand what I was talking about as far as using brand analytics. But you could also do the same thing if you just wanted to test the keywords on your own. If you don't have access to brand analytics, you can just put holiday type related terms into uh, your uh, campaigns, into your listings, into your ad copy, and see if you get lift from it that way. Uh, if you do have brand registry and access to brand analytics, then I definitely suggest you go ahead and take a look for a look at it just like I did right now. So let's go on to the other questions. Uh, Kitty asks, after you create a campaign flow in a Helium, can you adjust the bidding up, down, only in Seller Central? Um, after you create a campaign flow in, uh, I'm assuming you mean in ads, can you adjust the bidding up, down, only in Seller Central? No, you can do all that in ads. You can uh, you can either use our suggestions to do that, uh, to give those recommendations for you, or you can do it manually. An ad manager, you can, it's very similar to the campaign manager in Seller Central. Um, you would look at the, the account or campaign and you would decide if you wanted to do increases or decreases. But the benefit of ads is that we do give you suggestions on all of your keywords. So um, that would be what I would suggest that you look at um, uh, versus doing them manually, unless you like doing it manually, Katie, which some people do. Uh, I did it manually for two years for my clients. I did not like it, <laughs> which is why I built ads to make the suggestions for me so that I wouldn't have to think anymore about if I should increase or decrease or pause uh, a, a potential uh, keyword, or if I should look at search terms and if there's neg bad search terms, the ser search terms that are wasting, ads will suggest them to be negative. If you're uh, uh, Conversely, if you find you have search terms in your auto campaign, for example, that are doing really well, Ads will find those search terms and suggest those to be keywords uh, to be added manually into a campaign. So um, definitely check that out. If, if you have uh, um, Helium 10, if you are at least a Platinum member, if you're at least a Platinum member, you will be able to see the dashboard of ads and the analytics page of ads. Uh, so that'll give you an idea of uh, kind of what it's about. Um, you can look at the data. There's not a lot you can actually do because uh, that's for our uh, diamond level members and up only, uh, but it'll give you an idea uh, of some of the uh, data that you would have access to, Katie. So definitely check that out. Um, if you're not at least uh, a platinum, do that as a starter. Um, if you'd also like to see videos on ads, those are available in our knowledge base. Um, so you just click on, if, when you logged into members, you, log, you hit on uh, support. I believe is the button on the right hand, and you'll see uh, knowledge base will open up, go to marketing, because ads is all about marketing, and you'll see uh, videos and pro trainings that I've done on the ads uh, platform, and um, adjusting keywords and bids and things like that are, are definitely covered in those, in those videos that I've done. All right. 
Schwaben boy, not YouTube. These YouTube names just crack me up because you guys can use anything you want for YouTube names. So this is, this is awesome. Would you recommend for any change on the listing at PPC optimization uh, to actualize the listing per flat file? Is that your preferred way? Um, if, if you're talking about using uh, bulk optimizations, uh, yeah, if you if you know how to do that and you have a lot of listings that you would like to update using bulk, that's definitely one way that you could do it. Um, I've never done it that way, to be honest, so I can't answer. I would usually do these uh, changes just one at a time individually uh, for campaigns just to make sure that they were done correctly. Um, so I wouldn't say that's my preferred way, but that is the way that I know how to do it is by actually going into the back end keyword page of the product of the listing and then making the adjustments uh, there. Now, PPC optimization, same thing. I've never used bulk updating or bulk uploading. So anything related to um, PPC optimization, which is different than listing optimization. So those are, you're, you're combining two different things, listing optimization and PP, PPC optimization. Listing optimization is important to PPC optimization, but listing optimization is not PPC optimization. So my preferred method for PPC optimization is ads the tool that I built. <laughs> uh, again, so same recommendation, if you're at least a Platinum member, um, you should be able to see the first two pages of ads and you would see how you would be able to more easily optimize your PPC uh, using that uh, using that tool, using that platform. If that doesn't answer your question, um, Shrabin, just go ahead and, and uh, clarify that and, and maybe we'll get back, circle back to it uh, in the next uh, 30 minutes that we have here. Zubair asks, question not related to holidays, sorry. That's fine. It's open forum now after I'm done with my initial uh, uh, things that I want to share. I understand negative ACoS is acceptable at the beginning of a product launch for research purposes, but how long would you give a keyword before you pause it? I would give a keyword, our settings and ads are um, either uh, 10 clicks um, with no sales, we would make it negative. If it has spent a certain amount of money with no sales, um, like maybe half the, half the price of your product, uh, if it spent that, then we would make a, a, a search term negative. Um, if it has sales and it has a high A cost, which is I'm assuming is what you're saying, um, when you say negative A cost, you mean a high A cost. Uh, yes, a high A cost is going to happen at the beginning because you're testing all your keywords, right? Uh, or if it's not a campaign, you're, you're letting Amazon test different search terms and ASINs, which are product listings. You're letting Amazon test your product on different keywords and listings. Um, so yeah, you're gonna have a higher rate cost at the beginning because you're basically getting that data that you need then to, to whittle it down. So um, yeah, high A cost is acceptable at the beginning of your product. I say 100% is what you should shoot for, 100% A cost when you launch for at least the first two weeks. Um, how long would you give a keyword before you pause it? So um, I would only pause a keyword if I've already done all the work that I can do on the search terms. Search terms are the most important thing, you guys, that you need to, you need to keep in mind. It's not the keywords, it's the search terms. What search terms are, is Amazon connecting to those keywords? Now, if, you're, if this is an exact match keyword that you're talking about here, Zubair, then obviously the search term is the keyword, right? So in that sense, it depends on what your what your ACOS goals are. If if your ACOS goals are are thirty percent, and if it's within that range, then I wouldn't pause it. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, I meant high ACOS, not negative. Right. So, uh, however, my follow up to that is what's your what's your blended ACOS? Right. You you might have some campaigns with high with that have keywords in it with high ACOS, but they still are getting you sales. And you might have some campaigns that are also getting you sales at a low A cost. As long as your combined A cost is is you know pretty good, um, I would say anything that under thirty percent is pretty good when you're brand new. Then I would keep the I would even keep those high uh, A cost keywords that might be sixty percent, because your total um, I don't want to use total A cost, but your blended A cost, uh, which is just what's your what's the A cost of uh, if you look at all your campaigns and you look at your top line ACoS for, for that product or, or products that are similar, so parent and child, the, as long as that ACoS is good, then you should have those, those keywords in there. Um, what I often tell uh, users is to consider keywords as loss leaders. There are keywords that are going to be out there no matter if you're at launch, not, no matter if you've been running for a while. There's going to be keywords out there that you're always going to have to be... Uh, 
seen for because it is actually your product. Uh, and you do want to be seen for those keywords, obviously, because it is your product. And you want to cons consistently be in the consideration cycle of the shopper. And what that means is that you want to some some shoppers, you know, they, they browse Amazon and they come back uh, maybe a week later uh, and they look again. Um, if you're not consistently being seen for those specific keywords that are that are absolutely relevant to your product, then you're no longer in the consideration cycle of that shopper. Now, those keywords might have very high ACoS conversions, right? But the branding effect that you're getting from being being visible for that keyword is worth more than the high ACoS that that keyword uh, uh, gets, right? So as an example, uh, many of you guys have probably seen one of my clients that's a, a, it's a crutch, basically. Uh, but it's not really a crutch. It's like a peg leg. It's like a pirate leg that you attach to the bottom of your, uh, to your knee. And it holds your foot up, the foot, foot that's injured, um, and it makes it so that you don't need crutches that you lean on, that you hold on, that that hurt your, you know, hurt under your shoulders if you've ever used crutches. Um, so it's kind of it's called a hands-free crutch. Well, it's a crutch, but he converts terribly for that keyword. That keyword crutch is like an eighty percent ACOS, probably on average, right? But never going to pause it, and we're never going to pause that word crutch because he needs the shoppers need to consistently see that product. If you go on Amazon right now and put in the word crutch, I guarantee you, you're going to see the product I'm talking about. It's going to be at the, the, at the top. It's going to be a sponsored brand and you're going to see it below. Again, it converts terribly for that word, but you need that visibility because that is your actual product. There's no other way to describe that, that product in particular, right? It is technically a crutch. So um, if we would, if we would pause that keyword, because again, it has such a high cost, who knows how much organic uh, traffic and organic visibility, organic sales that we might lose for not being consistently uh, visible for that one particular keyword. So you have to think about what are your loss leaders? That's what I call them. I, it's probably a different term, maybe it's out there. What are your loss leader keywords? What are the keywords that are out there that you, you know you have to be seen for and you're just gonna have to suck it up and know that those keywords are gonna have a high ACoS. As long as you have other keywords and other campaigns with, with uh, keywords that have a lower ACoS, then the blended ACoS should be, that's what, what your focus should be on. Uh, on top of that, your additional focus should be in your total ACoS. Again, what's your total, uh, what's your total sales against your, your PPC spend? Um, that's gonna be lower because it's including in your organic sales as well. But as I consistently described, PPC helps with your organic sales. So take into account your total sales when looking at the effectiveness of your PPC campaigns. That's a metric that we have in ads. Uh, I believe we are the only uh, PPC platform that has visibility into the uh, total sales and tacos metrics. Um, and that is on our analytics page, which can, again, can even be seen by uh, platinum members. Uh, however, in order to see your total sales and uh, tacos, basically in order to see your organic sales, we need your MWS token activated. Uh, that's the way we are able to pull in your organic sales and compare them against your uh, PPC spend against your total sales. So, I um, hope that answers your question. <laughs> mm. Good, Bernadette, I'm glad that you uh, found this useful. Uh, again, yeah, if you guys are, are not brand registered, it, if you have time to get brand registered before, uh, you know, ASAP, definitely do that. There's a lot more ad units uh, available to you, sponsored brands, sponsored display, uh, and they definitely are uh, perform outperforming sponsored product uh, uh, placements right now. Um, Robert says, how about tips for a new seller not experienced friend or so drop the mic out? <laughs> well, that's what I've been doing this whole time. The <laughs> yeah, so uh, Robert, I, I, I guess um, I've been differentiating between the two. Um, so it, what you can do for sponsored products is, uh, again, you can still use the holiday uh, tips. You could still use those holiday keywords in your listings and your bullets and your title. Uh, you can still launch seasonal campaigns for your uh, that are sponsored product related. Um, if you're not doing uh, product targeting for your sponsored product campaigns, that's definitely something you should be doing. Uh, product targeting is your ASIN targets. So look at your search terms, look for those ASINs from your auto campaign that Amazon's finding for you that you see good conversions for. Use those ASINs in a product targeting campaign. Um, so yeah, that 
Those are my tips, along with everything else I just went through, Robert. <laughs> Miguel says, uh, I'm in a competitive niche. Yeah, that's, that's especially this this year. Mm. I've been paying a lot um, to auto research campaigns and still have not received a suggestion to add an exact keyword to my proven campaign. Any suggestions? Yeah, Miguel, so if uh, for those of you that uh, may not um, know what he's saying, he, he basically is using ads, our PPC management tool. He's created campaigns in that uh, tool. And again, we look at your auto campaign. Um, we look at the search terms for that auto campaign. We find search terms that uh, maybe are wasting and you and, and make them a, a negative suggestion. You can even automate that part process, to be honest. You don't need to actually manually apply suggestions, but I do highly suggest you manually do it for a little while until you're confident that the suggestions you are getting from ads are exactly what you want. So yeah, if you've been paying a lot into the auto and research, then what you need to do is look at your settings for, for those campaigns um, and maybe be a little bit more conservative. So um, in the ad manager, you would find the campaign, you'd click on the cog icon, which is a settings icon, which is in the far right corner of the page. That opens it up and it lets you know all the settings that you did when you created these campaigns. So maybe, for example, maybe you put 10 clicks, if the search term has 10 clicks and no sales. Um, make it a negative. Maybe you need to reduce that to five clicks. Um, it really depends on what you're seeing in your search term reports. If you're seeing a lot of search terms in there with uh, four or five uh, you know, uh, clicks each that are just spending money but haven't made any sales, then again, uh, if you reduce your click uh, threshold to a lower number, that's gonna reduce, you're gonna then see negative keyword suggestions. If you reduce your cost threshold, so we not only do we look at search term clicks, but we also look at search term spend. If the spend is over, I don't know how much your product is, but if it's $20, uh, your product is $20, and you know uh, if somebody spends $10 and there's no sales, $10 and they make a sale, it's still at 50% ACoS. So maybe you wanna lower your cost threshold to $5. Right, and again, that will then show you a more negative uh, keyword. So ads is only gonna do what you tell it to do, unfortunately, Miguel. So you need to go in and, and, and look at your settings and say, okay, then if I, if I want more negative keywords, what do I need to have my settings, uh, my settings do? The other thing that I would say for your auto campaigns, uh, and this is, when, um, this is in one of my PPC tips of the week, um, and actually my PPC tip of last week was about the brand analytics. If you guys wanna see that again, Look for my, my PPC tips of the week. Um, and I do have little one minute uh, things in there about, about different things that I speak about. And one of them is this, is that in your auto campaigns, make sure you're looking at your target, your targeting parameters that Amazon has for you. If you've had an auto campaign that launched anytime after January of 2019, you're gonna see four targeting levers, uh, loose match, close match, substitute, and I can never remember the fourth one. <laughs> There are four. There are four ways that Amazon matches shoppers to your auto campaigns. Look at that. Look at look at the uh, um, the results of in your auto campaign. Click on the ad group. Click on targeting. In it's, it'll be on the right hand side. Click on targeting. You'll see loose match, substitute, close match. Um, ah, I can't remember the fourth one, but you'll see all four. And generally, one, one or two are gonna perform better than the other ones, right? So you can turn off the ones, typically the one that's loose match does not convert very well. Loose match is the one that's giving you all these maybe search terms from Amazon that are kind of loosely related to your product, but not might not be exactly your product. Those might be the keywords that are wasting your spend, you know, that are, or that are wasting your money uh, on the search term level. So just turn that off. Right, or if it's made a couple of sales, but it's a high A cost, maybe reduce the bid. You can actually reduce bids on those targeting levers as well. You can do that in Seller Central. You can also do that in Healing Ten Ads. So that's what I would do. Um, Zuber says very beneficial concepts there. Thanks. Blender A cost. Bacos uh, is getting added to my day. <laughs> Bacos. Okay, I like that. I I, I will take Bacos. <laughs> I'm adding it to mine too then. <laughs> Ozgroup, hey, Ozgroup. Um, is it a way to test keywords in ads, potential products, and not my existing product? Or any other way to test it? Go back to the first part. 
Is there a way to test keywords and ads for potential products, not, uh, not my existing product? Um, you mean like set up, uh, set up fake, uh, uh, a fake test campaign, um, not your existing product. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to, uh, if it's not your existing product, but if it's a similar product, you could test keywords that way. If you have two products that are completely different, um, there's no real way to test those keywords. The only way to test keywords is to actually have them, you know, attached to a product that is specific to that and then let it run for uh, a week to see how those keywords do. So um, it has to actually be, um, it has to be an existing product. It has to be something that uh, Amazon can connect to. So um, that's really the only way that you can test keywords at all ever is to uh, have them in a campaign that's active and enabled and going to a product that obviously is very relevant to those keywords. If you've got a product in there that's not relevant to the keywords that you're running PPC for, then obviously that's just going to be, uh, you're just going to waste money um, or you might not even get any keywords to that uh, product because there's no relevancy there and Amazon's all about relevancy, right? They're, they're, that's their number one thing is they want to show uh, a PPC uh, campaigns that are they're super relevant to the whatever the shopper has put into the search bar. So uh, yeah, and unfortunately, the only way to test is to actually run is to run campaigns. Hey, Jake. <laughs> I talked to Jake regularly so it's interesting to see him here as well can we dive into similar products that are each their own style and each have color variations and are relevant for the same keywords that sounds like a fun rabbit hole oh jake i'm gonna kill you because that'll take the next 15 minutes and no one else is going to be able to answer questions uh, so i'll make it short yes um uh, oh so jake so you're one of our winners okay so if you guys are um we had, a, I don't know if you remember this, it actually started this whole Tacos Tuesday thing, but at the end of September, we did have a, a contest. We had a Tacos Tuesday after party. And during that after party, uh, there was a, a contest and people actually won uh, PPC consultations uh, with me. Uh, we basically said that we were going to make it this session, but a lot of people couldn't make this this timing because people are in different parts of the world. So actually what we're going to do is for each of those uh, people is we're going to figure out what time zone that they're in. Um, and then we're going to set up a, a separate, uh, 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 more one-on-one -on -one, uh, PPC uh, session to, to cover your specific questions like the one Jake is asking right now, because he is actually one of the winners. Uh, and I believe I did tell him that today was going to be that session, but it's actually not, we're actually going to re redo that. So, uh, keep an eye on that, but just to maybe quickly answer this, um, there's lots of different ways that you can do this, uh, you guys. So the, the question really is about, you know, what's the best way to, if you've got products with, um, that are the same, but maybe just different, very different colors, maybe a little bit, maybe different sizes, um, you know, but it's all the same keywords, w you know, what, what should you do? Cause technically you're competing yourself with yourself if you create different campaigns for all of those. So, and on one side, it, the argument is, well, um, if you have a campaign, a separate campaign for each one of those child variations, you've got more coverage, right? You've got more visibility when users do searches you're going to you're going to be found more times because you got a lot more campaigns that are out there because you have a campaign running for each one of your SKUs, right that is definitely one thing that you can do and it definitely helps with the, the consideration cycle but it's also more expensive right so if you're budget conscious then the alternative is to put all of these same SKUs into the same campaign using the same keywords uh, and then just seeing how they they do. Eventually, what you'll what you'll find if you do it this way is one of the color variations is going to do better. There's always going to be a color that you thought was going to be amazing, and it, it turns out that people don't like lime green, right? So you're going to see over time, hey, this one's not performing well, and then you could just turn it off, right? You could just turn it off. You could do the same thing if you have a whole campaign running for that lime green, whatever it is, sock socks, but. You can also do the same thing if you just have all the same SKUs in the same campaign, running to the same keywords, looking at the same results. So one is about branding and, and visibility and higher budget. And the other one is about um, being a little bit more uh, conservative, uh, 
knowing that you're not going to have as much coverage because you're only one, running one campaign for all those SKUs. You're letting Amazon pick, pick which SKU to show. Uh, and then you're getting the data from that and deciding if you want to optimize. You can also look at that data and say, hey, you know, uh, this one color is doing really, really well. So I'm actually going to make that its own campaign, right? And then move the other color variations to their own campaign because they might have a decent blend of ACoS, but you really want to focus on the one color that's actually doing really, really well or size or what have you. Um, so that is definitely one way you can do that. But we can definitely get further into the weeds on that, Jake, when we actually do our, our actual winner's um, consultation, which uh, I'll definitely follow up with you on that. All right, Nick asks, with exact match keywords, should I have 100 in an ad group or only 30 max? Uh, it, it, well, first of all, the max that we say is 20 here um, at, at any given time. Uh, again, that's just to make sure you get coverage to all of them, Nick. So, but my follow-up question is, what's the search volume, right? If these 100 exact keywords all have very low search volume, sure, you might be able to get them in, in there in a in 100 uh, or 30. But what you really should be doing, um, and we, we had a training on this for campaign structures, uh, the best way to set up your campaigns is to put keywords in there that um, uh, are have some similar search volumes. And you do that, so let's say you have 20 keywords, um, but the first or five of them have really high search volumes and 15 of them don't. Well, the high volume search terms or, or, or the high search volume keywords are gonna get all the budget because they, they have higher search volume. So you're never gonna get the, the data that you need for the 15 remaining. Right, so that's probably uh, even more so with 100. So again, unless these 100 keywords are very similar in search volume, uh, I would suggest breaking them up into maybe four groups of 25 and putting them uh, in different campaigns, but also making sure that the search volumes are of similar, uh, uh, you know, high volume in one campaign, low in the other, and then maybe uh, two for two for mid. Um, the whole point of PPC is testing these keywords. You did your research, you found these 100 keywords, you wanna see if they work, right? The only way to see if they work is if they get impressions. So they're more likely to get impressions if you set them into campaigns where the budget's gonna be spread evenly across um, those campaigns. So I, ho I hope that makes sense. Um, we do have, uh, again, I did a campaign structures training, I think a couple months ago, um, I need to follow up on that. We did a we did a four week training session, which actually launched this weekly call that I do now. Uh, but I, I would I want to make those available so that you guys can watch those uh, training sessions training sessions as well. Those included slides and all all kinds of things that we that uh, are, are really helpful. All right, we've got uh, eight minutes, so let's see what is left on. And and thank you, uh, Bernadette. Uh, compliments is the fourth match type. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just saw that um, that she that she put that. So yeah, the match types for auto campaigns are close match, loose match, substitute, and complements. Two of those match types are for product listings. Um, so uh, campaigns that are going to be in the listing, and then two of those match types are for the search. So when users do a, a shopper search, and then uh, the results that they see. So. If you guys have not taken a look at those targeting options for auto campaigns, you're definitely missing out on a potential uh, easy way to optimize those campaigns without having to uh, focus solely on the search terms or the search terms as far as optimizing them manually. <laughs> Miguel says, how do I put a negative keyword back into a campaign, make it a negative so I can lower the bid instead of making it a negative? Well, uh, a negative keyword is only a search term, so you can't change the bid on a search term, Miguel. So there's two different things. There's search terms. Search terms are the things that the shopper's putting in, uh, and then Amazon's connecting that search term to the keyword. The keyword is the thing that you're bidding on. The keyword is the only thing that you can, the keyword is the only thing that you can increase the bid on. You can't increase the bid on a search term. So you can unnegative a search term though. So uh, whether in Seller Central or whether in ads, there's an archive button. So just go to the negative, just go to the campaign, uh, find the negative keyword that you, a negative search term. It's, it, it becomes a negative keyword, um, 
but really it's a search term when it starts out, right? It becomes a negative target. So what we should actually probably call them is negative targets because ASINs can be negative now too, right? You guys, if you didn't know that, that's like two months ago. If you're looking at your auto campaigns and you see a bunch of ASINs that are spending money and not, not benefiting you at all, ASINs are those 10 digit numbers that start with the letter B and that followed by the number zero typically. Um, those are ASINs. So you can actually make those negatives as well. Those are not keywords, so that they're negative, they're negative targets. But if you add a negative target, whether it be a search term or an ASIN, you can actually archive those as well. And all that means is that Amazon will no longer um, stop that, that ASIN or search term from connecting to your keywords. So you should start seeing that again um, in your search term reports after you archive the, the negative. Um, and then you can make adjustments to maybe the keyword that that search term was linked to. There we go. Zubair asks, is it a good idea to use Helium 10 Cerebro to look for keywords where competitors have high sponsored ad positions and other relevant keywords they may be overlooking and use this for your PPC strategy? Absolutely. Yeah, um, you know, the, uh, keyword research, um, which is you know, something that Helium 10 is known for, Helium 10 tools are what I used as a consultant. So I was very familiar with Magnet and Cerebro. Um, so yeah, you definitely want to look for um, you know, what the competition is doing. I would always do, you know, use Cerebro, look at at least five different competitor ASINs and then see that were very similar to the product I was, I was trying to uh, launch um, and then see what, the, what their top keywords are, right? Um, I would use a little bit what's called the CPR method. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. It's something that we used to, to promote or Helium 10 used to promote actually before I even got here. Um, but you definitely want to look for keywords that at least, it's a, so let's say you use those five ASINs. You want to look for keywords that at least three of those ASINs are showing on the top position for it. So you want to whittle it down and you want to make it so that maybe you're only looking for keywords that over, have over $1,000 thousand dollars a thousand search um, search volume of, of over a thousand a month um, so yeah definitely do that um, but make sure you whittle it down too you don't, you don't want every single keyword that uh, maybe those five asins are uh, getting a top position for you want to whittle it down to the ones that you know at least three uh, if you're looking at five or if you're only putting in four ASINs, make, make sure at least two of them uh, are showing for those keywords. That's really showing um, shopper intent too for those particular keywords if they are buying that product that is similar to yours. So yeah, that's definitely that's definitely PPC keywords then that uh, you would you would want to use because obviously that's what the that's what these competitors are doing, right? Especially if the results that you're looking at, um, if they show up in the sponsor position, because you can see sponsor position as well when you do your keyword research. So then obviously those guys definitely are using those keywords for a uh, uh, sponsor position. Um, but there might be some organic keywords that you see as well that you can potentially target if you do that. How can I see the previous recording? Um, all of these eventually go onto uh, YouTube. So yeah, <laughs> they're available on Helium 10's Facebook page and the YouTube channel. So um, yeah, if, if uh, you wanna see what previous conversations we've had, previous features and tips I talked about at the beginning of those um, uh, PPC sessions, then you can definitely take a look. And this one will probably be up by tomorrow or the day after that. Um, and again, there's also the PPC tips of the week that I do one every other week. Um, yeah, so next week I'll have a PPC tip video as well. And those are just kind of one minute little bites of information that we, we try to condense into one minute. Sometimes we over condense into that one minute. I actually want to redo a couple, re redo a couple of them, but that's, that's, that's another conversation. <laughs> um, what's next week's topic? I don't know. Uh, I'm in the. I'm going to film it today, so it'll probably be holiday related. Um, it may even be something that is on this this deck, um, so that we get you know more people get access to this information, right? So uh, we got two minutes here. So uh, Jake Paulson says, use the keyword list tool. It's super helpful. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You're welcome, Zubair. Um, I, I love the Tacos and Bacos Tuesdays. And uh, yes, yeah, thank you, Cassandra. I don't know what I'm gonna do without Cassandra. Eventually I'm gonna be doing these without Cassandra, maybe as soon as next week. So I probably will not be as good, but uh, we will, uh, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I do wanna highlight uh, 
J Jake's mentioned here, the, the keyword list tool. So we do have a uh, the, uh, what's called a keyword manager, um, or maybe it's called keyword list tool. No, I, I have no idea. It might just be called keyword manager. But when you guys are doing your searches or when you're doing your research, um, make sure that you're leveraging that, uh, the keyword manager. Make sure you're making folders that say, you know, for PPC or what have you. Um, or for negative, right? If you find a bunch of negative keywords that you definitely know don't work for your product and you wanna just store them somewhere that you can then reference after the fact, use our keyword manager tool. It's really super helpful and um, it's gonna start to be integrated actually more into, into other things. So one of the things that we are working on uh, with our uh, uh, acquisition of press is on is a, new, is a new campaign builder, for example. So in that campaign builder, we're gonna be able to link to that keyword manager tool so that you can just go build the campaign, link to the keyword manager, find the keywords that you did all your research on and then put them in there. So there's gonna be lots of um, little integrations like that that we're gonna be doing uh, next year. Uh, but leveraging the keyword manager is uh, uh, definitely one of those things. So thank you so much. Uh, I, there's a lot of thank yous here, Hind and Miguel. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today. I will see you guys uh, next uh, Tuesday. Um, and again, if you were on here and you were a winner from the Tacos Tuesday event at the end of September, uh, we're gonna be reaching out for a, a more individual a session with you guys. So see you guys next week and uh, take care, be safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.